Hi, this is Paul Tyler, and welcome to another episode of the Reimagine Podcast uh, with my co-host, Laura Dinan Haber. Laura, how are you? I'm doing well. It's wonderful to be back here on the airwaves, and uh, today we have some special guests with us. So without further ado, let's let's jump in and, and say hello. We have Hey Herbie with us today, and we have Ashish and Jill, and it's exciting what you're doing, how you're doing it, and um, you know, I'd like to turn it over to you. Jill, if you'd like to start, you know, tell us a little bit about yourself and, and how you got started with the company. Yeah, yeah. So my name is Jill Elkema, and I am a licensed social worker. Um, and I was introduced to the Hey Herbie team um, through 101010, which is now X Genesis in Denver, Colorado. And the idea was to solve a wicked problem. In our case, it had to do with um, long-term care, and my background is in intergenerational communication. I work with families um, as a counselor and as a psychotherapist to help them make decisions later in life. And um, I'll let Ashish tell you a little bit more about, about the product. Thanks, Jill. Yeah, thanks everybody, uh, Paul and Laura. Uh, I'm Ashish Mudgal, uh, co-founder and CEO of Hey Herbie. As a uh, so a little bit background. I'm, I'm coming from research background. I used to be in my previous work life. I used to be a scientist, uh, but mostly work, working on AI and machine learning. And I, I believe, totally believe, when uh, people from outside the industry can look at it, it's, it's totally a different way to think about it. And that's what can bring the innovation. But obviously they need to learn. And that's where Jill and Flo and our rest of the team members actually introduced me to long-term care. As yeah, Jill well, said, yeah. go ahead, Paul. Oh, got it. No, no, this is this is perfect. And I, we, we want to sort of, you know, dive deep in terms, in terms of the back and story, but just kind of get people's appetite. Uh, uh, what did, what, let's say Herbie, what do you do? What, sure. what, what problem are you tackling? What, what, what can I buy from you? Sure. So Herbie is, is a friend uh, in technology for older adults. Uh, I don't want to throw so much statistics, but this is before COVID, before Corona happened. Uh, an average household in America has eight to nine screens per home. Screens means TV, iPod, iPad, uh, computers. But people older than 65 still consuming most of their media through television. That's why we augmented older adults' television so they can stay connected safe and above all happy and and we want to enhance their social capital because again one more statistics social isolation has similar health impact as smoking 15 cigarettes a day and and we want this cutting edge latest technology but behind a simplified solution that older adults love and understand yeah and uh so, so, so pull it a little deeper because it's interesting. We've had a, a number of startups you know, that we've been you know, involved with where you have something that was kind of interesting before COVID, no, after COVID or during where we are at this point. Wow, it's uh, super important. So look, maybe, maybe be a little bit more um, explicit. So, um, okay, so I, you know, if I have a parent, what are you doing to help me with them? Correct. Yeah, Paul, I'm not trying to uh, play like a TV series, giving you only bits <laughs> and like holding the suspense back. Uh, so yeah, here it, how it works. Um, right now we are targeting B2B, uh, business to business, and we are, uh, we are uh, getting in independent living facilities and assisted living facilities. So how you can get involved is, let's say one of the assisted living facilities have Herbie TV. Uh, they can go on our website and they will have their own account with us. They means the, the facility. And they will also include the resident, older adults, one immediate family member. So you as a family member will receive an email or a text message on your smartphone that, hey, your dad or mom who is living in ABC retirement facility now uses Herbie TV. Now on the resident or your dad's side, we have a device that connects to any television with an HDMI uh, cable. It doesn't need to be a smart TV. Now with one click, easy to use remote, TV remote that they love and have been using for all their life. With one click, they can call on your smartphone 
or they get all the reminders from their uh, facility or even by you right on their TV. And that, that we, are, we are assuming that not only enhance their social capital as well as in, uh, increase their participation inside the activities. And you can add more team members inside uh, on our website. So it's safe and secure. Only the people who are in the team, older adults team can talk or conversate with them. You know, it's, it's, it's interesting. Now, I, I guess there, there are kind of two problems that you're solving. One is loneliness. I mean, it is huge. I mean, I, if we go right back to the problem is, it is when you think about your customers, the customer or the problem you're solving for the person in the facility, the older, or is it solving a problem for the children who need to stay in touch, want to stay in touch with their, with their parents, but can't? Or both. So Jill, yeah, yeah. Jill should come and meet. We are trying to solve. It's, 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 that's a part of the problem, right? Everybody is affected and how we can connect all of them. So Jill, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I think, I mean, like if you look at the United States, right, it was, it was all of our dreams to move out and live on our own. And, and depending on your culture, you're not necessarily geared towards, okay, I'm going to share space later in life and I'm going to have somebody in my space. And so we have um, quite a bit of age stratification in a lot of cultures. And what happens is these families are just craving a way to be connected, but you know, you could end up being kind of a helicopter kid and you're, you're trying to bubble wrap someone who's getting older. And, and this is somebody that has a lifetime accumulation of experience and is able to make their own decisions. Um, but families aren't necessarily trained in how to do that. And so if we can, when somebody moves or if somebody is out of state, if we can maintain that connection longer, it's that much easier for families to have hard conversations. And um, Polly, I completely agree with you. There, there is nothing worse than um, hearing somebody is lonely, right? And, and on the same hand, on the, on the other hand, um, if you are the person who is older and you know your kids are busy, which a lot of the kids are Gen X women, um, so they are sandwich generation, the last thing you wanna do is feel like you're an interruption. So you have so many different layers of, okay, what if I'm lonely? What if I'm ha something has changed and it's harder for me to build relationships? Um, as we get older, some of our relationships end, right? Or people move. So how, how do we maintain that social network and that social capital so that when decisions do need to be made, they're easier conversations and people feel supported? And I know that you know, my, my loved one who's older is um, content. I think that's the biggest piece, you know? So I guess for, for people listening, it, it would be helpful, I think, to explain a little bit. So um, I can, you know, I can picture it. I have a loved one who's living in a facility now. Hey, Herbie is attached to the TV. We're talking about the interconnectedness. What, what else can I do with the technology? You mentioned the word safety. And obviously safety is a big concern at all times. But what else can I do? So I like the fact that reminders can come up on the screen. I could actually probably use this in my life right now. Hey, don't forget to go, you know, give the dog some water, take your vitamins, whatever it is. But what, what other things can we um, do with this technology to work with our, our intergenerational friends? Sure. So <clears throat> when, when we get into this, this, when I get into this industry, uh, and a lot of people think like, uh, especially when we are hiring new people, it's, it's not cutting edge technology. Oh, you have to, uh, I don't want to use the word, but dumb down the technology. And I, I'm thinking other way around. It's you have to use the latest technological tools, but you have to simplify them so older adults can understand. So to answer your question, Laura, uh, our TV box, it has Android operating system. What it does is, all the apps that you have created for your smartphone, actually with small changes and our use of APIs can be brought on our, our uh, device. What it does is it, it's creating their uh, TV, their access to all the services, 
that you or me or even my son, four-year-old son, take for granted, like booking a ride. So we, we were supposed to run uh, before COVID a pilot uh, where we can, older adults can book their shuttle service through TV. Or when the shuttle is ready for the mall, it will show up on their TV. More um, and importantly, we also have a collaboration with a social robot. And it, it's a tall robot, four, uh, means four foot. And when it, it's a physical robot, you can talk to it. And, and uh, initially it creeps you out, but it, it makes you <laughs> a good friend. And why I said creeps you out, because he, he focuses on you and then he involves with you and he looks around. So it's, it's fun thing, but it costs 10 grants, eight to 10 grants, who can afford it? We are bringing all of its brain to cloud and now with our each device, we can actually have that robot with your TV. And that's a social companion can assess your emotional state. Based on that, it conversates with you. And, and as we move along, obviously we can, uh, we can assess your uh, physical and emotional well-being or if there is a deterioration in your health. But as I started this answer, we have to simplify the technology. So we don't wanna rush into it. Let's only focus as the demand of time with COVID, communication and social isolation. But the potential is huge with the product. Did you happen to see this Netflix um, uh, documentary? It was sort of short films by artists strung together. And did you see this one? And there's one like 10 minute clip of a elderly gentleman, Italian gentleman in the nursing home. Did you see this one? No, I have seen few, like one with the drone, uh, yeah, there, there's the drone. one, I, I will try to send you a clip after this, but there's a short sure. where, and I don't want to spoil the ending for it because you, you have to watch this. And so basically an, an older gentleman in, in Italy is in a nursing home and he's, you realize he's having a, a video call with some, somebody he loved but never married. Okay, he was married, this was his love of his life. And he's, he's having this conversation via video. And it's very interesting because from what you're just doing, it's, it clearly is assisted. The conversation was clearly assisted by somebody in the background. <laughs> okay. <you> see. <laughs> and it, 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 uh, without spoiling, you have to watch because I think you, you could actually could, uh, um, it, it's pretty poignant for what you're describing here. And uh, I think it also talks about it. What struck me was it was less about the people wanting to talk to this person. It was more about this person wanting to talk to the people on the outside. I agree. And um, um, you know, I, I think we talked about these. You, you kind of alluded to the technology, and I, I don't, we'll, we'll clearly head to the technology. But and maybe Jill, you could talk about this. Is how do you engineer a process or think about a process where it actually encourages people to talk? Because I mean, I, and I've always heard, you know, Saturdays and Sundays are the worst times in these facilities because, you know, everybody is sort of, you know, they're, they're skeleton crews. It should be family visiting time, but you know, the honest truth is most people either can or don't want to come and visit their, their parents. How do you engineer this so that they, they want to? So that, the, so that they want to use it? They want, so they want to actually engage with their parents in these, in these facilities. Yeah, well, well, I think part of it is there's there can be a lot of pressure if somebody is an older adult in a community. Um, there's a lot of pressure. Hey, I got to go across town and I've got to visit, and then it's this concentrated amount of time, and I feel like I'm my only connection to the quote unquote outside world. Um, Another piece of that that we've looked at is how can we help people who are in these communities be able to connect to each other. And you know, we know that when people move into um, some kind of you know, assisted living, skilled nursing facility, it's those first few months that are really, really hard. And it's also really expensive to these communities if people can't build that social capital and feel like they you know, fit in. And so what we're talking about with Herbie now is you have, you have the camera on top of the TV, you have the device, you have a remote that has the speaker in it, and you can call and you can connect in your, without leaving your room. The other piece is, what if you have, um, a lot of times there's people who have a tendency to be more outgoing. Maybe there's a retired social worker, who knows? <laughs> and um, those could be people that could call 
um, in the community to each other so that it's not, it's not as much pressure on just, you know, uh, just the kid being the emotional support when somebody moves or when something happens. Um, we all have the ability to form connections with each other. How do we maintain those connections longer? Um, you know, now, when, now, I, when I'm yeah. Now, now, do you, do yeah. you find any differences with the technology? You know, and I, we're going to get to technology, Chief. We're going to get there. <laughs> yeah, because I think there's some really interesting things. I'm, I'm thinking about, you know, like almost like conversational UX. Now, pre-COVID, now I, my, my mother, I, and I, I've had lived through the whole thing. You know, my mother in a home remote. Oh, my God. You know, what, what happens? How do I talk to her? Can she pick up the phone? Or she lost the phone. Like, you know, that whole nightmare, right, is... is Wow, would would have, would have, would it have been great to be able to communicate with her on video? And and I think of all the the nuances I would have picked up about her condition and caring that I wouldn't have had it just on the phone. Um, so you know, I, I I'm sold on your on the the, the the bigger problem and concept that you're you're doing now. Now, um, my, my mother-in-law is in, in a facility. And, you know, it's nice one. It's a long way away from us um, out west. My, you know, my wife's here. Brother-in-law's in town now. Pre-COVID, she was calling on the phone. And, Hopefully, hopefully my brother in was not listening, but he would block her. <laughs> oh, <laughs> savage. <laughs> no, my wife is calling, calling, calling. She's the one probably giving more care. Um, do you find on video conferencing is the people who want to have a video conference and are open to it on, on the children's side, do you find any gender differences? I mean, you know, males versus females wanting to do this. Uh, did that factor into the product design or, or development or testing? Go ahead, Joe. The, oh, you want? Oh, yeah, I can. So, uh, I think we did from your perspective. Uh, we found, and <laughs> uh, you were right, brother-in-law. Brother-in-law <laughs> is uh, blocking him uh, because in our our journey, con customer journey, we found that it's the your oldest daughter who is there to help you, and we call her Mary in just our, our conversation. And we have her whole profile created. She is the one who is more, who want to help more. And, and to your previous, just for the Netflix thing, and, and uh, you might, I don't know if you have seen that, that social dilemma, I think, or social, where they are talking about how these big giants uh, are creating this addiction. Of oh, technology. interesting. So I, want, I use, want to watch that. I want to right? watch it's, it's yes. amazing. And, and when I was talking about this, uh, when I was watching that, I was thinking how our technology has to be other way around. Uh, uh, instead of saying that we are creating the addiction to use technology, how we can say the more you use, the more you are actually going out to your community. If we can bring that to our metrics, that's amazing. I remember one time I was pitching our, uh, I don't know if I'm swaying away from your question, but one time I was pitching to a um, resident home, uh, assisted living facility, and I remember one 80 plus year old lady, amazing lady, she, she was sharp. She got frustrated and irritated with me. And she was like, what do you think? We are couch potatoes? We are just sitting all day and watching TV? And I was like, no, I, I actually want you. No, you are showing like we just watch TV. That's where we need everything video chat, our menus. So I think we have to bring bring that aspect to our technology. The more you you use, how your outside social capital within the facility or with the family members is increasing. And and to your point, uh, it's 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 opening up the world. And to Jen Jill, if you want to add more to the gender aspect, I think you can answer that better. Yeah, sure, sure. So what, what I find is um, when, you have, when you have someone, a parent who has all sons, you know, all men, Gen X, used generally Gen X, um, they want to know what conversations, um, but again, depending on the culture, they might not know what questions to ask. And I think a lot of this is, as people get older, we don't know, we don't always know what's available and what's not available in aging. Um, gender wise, a lot of the generation X women who are doing the whole sandwich generation thing, they're often talking with their network, like, how are you doing this? This is what I'm, this is what I'm doing now. Um, but there's not necessarily 
always a place you can go to figure out, hey, what's available? What's out there? Um, I, I think in terms of who's using what, um, a lot of times gender-wise, it's the son-in-law that, that does a lot of the tech support side of things over the phone. Um, and then it can be the women doing a lot of the emotional support piece. Um, I think those are really, really broad and I've seen variety in that. Um, but like Ashish was saying, we were, we, when we were doing our initial research, um, we were looking at women who are in their early 50s, um, generally um, educated and usually trying to send their kids off to college either in a first or a second career, they're at their height of their salary earning um, potential. And it's right at that cusp of, and now I think my parents are going to need more help. What do I do? And I'm, I, and, and it's, I, you know, it's a second job to manage a second household that's across town or across the United States. It's a lot of work. So in, in thinking about the generations, we talked about the the parent or the, the person who's in the home. We talked about the child or the people caring for them. But have you, have you looked at or what work have you done with the, the potential grandchildren generation? So I'm thinking, wouldn't it be cool? And I had a friend do this um, just as the, the onset of COVID where she pulled a bunch of us. Um, she, you know, she put it up on her Instagram story. She found us, communicated with us that way and said, there is a local nursing home and people cannot go in to visit and these individuals living in the nursing home are lonely. Would you be willing to grab 15 minutes on a Saturday and FaceTime someone you don't know just to make their day? Interesting. So, that, so that's what we did. It was a whole band of us and it was continuous wow. and you FaceTime in and, and it's great. Yes, if you can do it with family, wonderful. If you can do it with somebody who you don't know, wonderful. And, and to me, Hey, I, I'm a person who loves stories. I think stories, if we can bring them with us forever and ever and ever and pass them on, like, I don't know what, what better capital we have. So I, I see such a potential to, you know, is it, is it working with groups like, you know, Girl Scouts? Is it Boy Scouts? Who knows? Who cares? It could be someone, you know, down the road. But to be able to get on the other side of this device to kind of go in and help with this loneliness aspect or the educational aspect, I think is really, really cool. Um, and, and I see potential in that way as well. So not even just the, I have to take care of my mom. It's like, wonder what we can learn today about a time that we'll never experience. So I see that as a really cool potential here too. I totally, I totally agree and Jill can elaborate, but I will just insert my one story with my, my son. So my, my mom and dad's grandson, he's four year old and, uh, uh, Whenever my mom, my parents, they're back in India, so thousands of miles away, they, they miss uh, growing up, seeing his grandkid growing up here. Uh, so whenever I get a call on my phone and I point it towards him, now he thinks like we are playing and he starts running. And I have to <laughs> chase all the rooms for him. And that's a good moment, but I, it's very hard for me to capture. And they'll, they don't see anything on the other side, my parents. They just get dizzy there moving the phone and and this being the camera on tv the whole living room there they love this that the way my son interacts with them keep playing and that becomes the part of their life so you are totally right it means it's just that generation can be easily involved and and jill can elaborate and that's a great idea how we can get what kind of groups we can get on the other side there's a whole potential on the other side yeah, I think when you, you know, when you're, when you're able to look at the whole room, it gives you context, right? And that's a huge piece. What you're talking about with the intergener intergenerational piece, we, we especially know that people from the boomer generation get along really well with the millennial generation. They were both huge generational cohorts and they love to talk with each other, you know, in the workplace, wherever it is. And so I really believe we're going to see more intergenerational, you know, pen pal programs, whatever it is. That's amazing that you did that. And I'm the same way. You know, I, I love hearing somebody's experience and story and, you know, developmentally, um, as the two halves of our brain continue working together more and more, as we get older, our potential for autobiography increases. And so people have a tendency to want to synthesize their life experiences and share that. 
So you're speaking exactly to where people are developmentally and that there's this huge need for us to be able to communicate. Well, you know, con connecting dots in the dark side of what Laura described is, you know, think about catfishing. And I, I've heard, done some interesting studies on this because older people will actually send money, you know, to people who they've met on Skype, even though they know they're not real. <laughs> But they needed that connection remotely that they weren't getting in their their physical world. So, so I, I, I kind of go. You know, go back. Right, here comes technology. She's just going to come here. So you you have a complicated product, right? Because you've got at least three customers. You've got the the Mary on one end, you know, mom on the other, or dad sitting in the facility. Now you've got the, the third person, which is the facilitator, or the third, which is the facilitator. Now. When I was working with my mother, I, you know, I was fortunate to have somebody come in the house, you know, or her apartment until we had to put her, to get her in a facility who could help her. But it was like once every, you know, a couple of days, she'd go in and find where the charger was for the cell phone, the charger for the cell phone, about, the, you know, it was, you know, the most I could get was a cell phone. She couldn't handle a smartphone. It was just buttons, you know, it was buttons for vision. It had to be simple and easy. Um, now, fast forward today, literally, uh, okay, I'm, I'm we're one of your, we could, we could have been one of your customers, you know, Jill. Um, <laughs> mother's in that facility, it was great, it was convenient. Guess what, it's been locked down for six months, she hadn't seen anybody. What do we get her, she had this old TV little thing, okay. So I said, my wife, why don't we get her like a, I don't know, Facebook, and her brother, Facebook portal or, or Amazon. Okay, well, my, my wife made the decision from here, made brother, go to you know best buy buy a giant tv bring it in okay it was that was about as simple a task as that center could handle was putting tv plugging it up you know i think connecting the face but for tell, tell me about the installation why why is this a good idea oh yeah we just bought a tv <laughs> but they don't have your product they they don't they don't have your product <laughs> In the facility, so t t tell us about the TV and why you know why is it necessary for something to be easy for a facility to install and use? Yeah, uh, so first thing, Paul, like you said, we have different stakeholders, and not to increase the complexity, everybody has different requirements. Uh, and and whatever you say about these big giants, companies, Google, and they, they are. One thing that has happened in this last 10 years, 15 years, having a startup becomes like a jigsaw puzzle because pieces are all out there. It's just, you need to fit. You don't have to build things from scratch. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. And that's what we found that the pieces are there like Android open source, it's open source. It's there. Can we utilize it? The technology on the Mary side, so that the kid side, is already there smartphone it's such an amazing thing on the go you're always in touch the battery lies have improved the, the memory is so we just we are looking this as a jigsaw problem and there are different stakeholders sitting and how we can solve this so uh, i think we jill and the rest of our team has done a great job means they they understand mary and older adult like like next door neighbor no maybe a family member right uh, whereas I understand the technology aspect. And I remember one time, so it's, it's different for each, but we have to bring that all together. So why B2B or how we can help facilities? I remember first few times when I, whenever I go to a facility and I want to pitch that, hey, we have a cool technology. As soon as I utter the word technology, they shut their doors. They're like, oh, more work for me. I don't want to do that. They're going to be installations. They're going to be mess ups. I, it's that's what how their brain works. But if we talk about TV, just by say, saying TV, they understand. Facility member, oh, older adults love TV. They love to have their remote with batteries. Batteries is very important. Uh, so they they love to have those things. And when we talk about, we're going to reduce your time. Um, that, that you have to spend with older adults to get them enhance their socialization, it becomes easy from the facility aspect. And that's where the TV is, older adults understand it. They, they don't, uh, like my mom, she can use smartphones, but it's behavioral change for her. She just doesn't fit there. 
but with TV, she, she fits. And with facilities, we have to tell them it's, it's an easy work. So don't, uh, we're gonna, it's the ease of use, easy installation and minimal support. And I can go deeper and deeper with everything in the facility like tech support or, or, or activity coordinator or executive who or what they want. But overall on facility, it has to be easy to use. For older adults, they, they love TV. They, they love to watch it. And uh, on an average in America, people older than 65 watches 45 hours weekly television. And again, I'm not saying that uh, they are couch potatoes. They are not. It's, it's just easy thing to do, right? right? right. And, and we want to integrate in, in their family because if you know, there are some products, they were amazing. Uh, I don't want to name the brands, but in case of emergency, you can push a button and you have uh, help wherever you are. Amazing product, easy to use. Nobody uses it. Older adults keep it in the nightstand because it shouts out loud that you are old if you have that around your neck or as a waist wristband, right? We <laughs> don't want to give yeah. that, right? We, we dealt with that exact situation about three weeks ago. It was like six feet from where she was. Just like, uh, does you no good? Not <laughs> even the hard way. Sure. And, and that's where Jill is really helping us, everybody, how we can make it cool. So if something is enhancing your television, oh, my television is cool now, you feel hip among your peers. Like, hey, I'm using Herbie. So that's from the older adult's perspective. Now from Mary's perspective, like kid's perspective, she already has this, how we can integrate. And we have our app for phone. So let's just use this. And that's why I'm saying we are not building something bottom up. It's the jigsaw puzzle. We have to just fit the pieces and put it in a better shape in front of older adults. And we are still learning. We are still learning from them. Go ahead, Jill. And I just, I just wanted to go back to the piece that Paul was mentioning about the scam piece and the targeting, you know, because I think that is something to keep in mind. And um, there are some pieces of privacy that just went out the window with COVID. It's like, I, I've got to be able to see somebody. You know, I got to be able to put eyes on the situation and it's, it's just too hard for me not to visit. So with Herbie, because, because the team is being made online, when those are the only people, once you make that team, those are the only people that, that you're able to video call. And so that creates a closed loop. Um, it's encrypted and that way you um, have a safe and secure connection. And so we really see, I mean, I see this from the provider side of this would be amazing if I wasn't running all over town to try and visit people and I was able to provide these, you know, telehealth options to somebody's home or even friendly check-ins with a volunteer program or something like that. Um, but you control, you can control the team. And if you're the kind of person that you're in a community and you have a computer, you could add your own people. The community could add their own people. Um, but that closed loop piece is key. Um, and, and we're definitely, I, I think we're gonna see a swing back to people also need a certain level of protection. Well, okay, I, I look at your company and you are, you know, this is great. You're tackling a lot of problems here. so. I guess if I go through the problems, I get, so the problems I've heard are nursing home, they weren't a tech center, they weren't a video conferencing center, guess what, how do you get them there, right, so they can support this stuff. Yeah. You've got somebody who's older, who may know how to turn a TV on, answer phone, but doesn't, you know, doesn't understand, needs to learn like four more buttons, how do you get them? It's, it's, it's interesting, just an anecdotally, what I'm seeing here in the U.S. at least, churches, believe it or not, are a huge um, help desk <laughs> because so many of these church services have gone online in the last six months and we've seen that that, that anecdotally um, the other one is from the family perspective how do you how do you encourage them to talk right find time for them you know it's, it's, it's a large point how do you engineer it so that people want to engage here i mean if, if we if you kind of looked at those problems you know, which, which is the first one that people will say, ah, ah you crack. Oh, and by the way, there's a technology piece, which is how do you, what's, where's the glue on all this stuff? Um, what, what's the first, you know, problem that people are going to say, oh my God, you know, Her hey, Herbie, knocked it out of the park. Jill, you want to take? 
No, go ahead. Yep. Oh, uh, <clears throat> so you know all these exercises you do uh, that we want our customer to be the hero of our brand. And she or he needs to do this and solve. In the end, means she's facing a huge problem. In the end, kick it out of the park, like you said, and they become hero. And we did a lot of these exercises. Uh, and, and there were, I think my personal, I should not say favorite problem, but my personal uh, uh, means problem that, that we think was huge. Uh, just, just knowing that your parents are lonely and isolated and need help and you are so busy in your life because you have your own family and you cannot provide that. That guilt, especially to our generation, is huge. We don't want to use that guilt, but, but I'm, I'm saying that that is huge to a, um, um, a Gen X or person who needs to take care of, like my dad or my mom is there. And in some few research we have find out 80% of people in this generation wants to help their old uh, their parents. And if they help them, they feel good about it, 80% of them. So we, we our, everything is in a good place, but the time, there is no time. Like Jill said, sandwich generation. So for me, it's, it's can we reduce, instead of you driving 40 minutes, can it be just a call? And especially knowing and watching them, like Jill said, having the whole perspective, once a day is is huge and then continuation of that is the technology scams and spams because there is so much going on right now and if we, we are HIPAA compliant we are keeping the data encrypted it's only like Jill said closed loop so I believe it's it's the scarcity of time and wanted to help that guilt and and then technology sharks that, that are sitting there those two are Jill, you can add because we had a whole list. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're right, Paul. When I think about the different problems we're solving, it, it, it gets a little deer in the headlights. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> but you know, I I agree with with Ashish. I think there there's a busy schedule and there's guilt and there's not wanting to interrupt, but there's also this huge desire to be connected and. We have a lot of different solutions. Um, you know, I think of um, someone I worked with and she had her TV. And then when there was this uh, presentation by the community, then they came around and they connected her on an iPad. And then she had her own iPad and then she had her phone. But when, if she went out, she had her cell phone. And it was just all of these different pieces. And there were some times where she would just be like, I can't figure out which one I'm gonna use. And, right. and Keeping that a little more simple would be would be a big piece of that as well. Yeah, I gotta say, I mean, simplicity, even in you know today's world, especially, I don't know who couldn't use more of it. <laughs> so kind of just meet them where they are, teach them a little bit how to get to where they need to be, and then solve solve the problem. I think is a really it's a really cool way of of being able to do that. So. How about hard food? Okay, this is okay. Why are we talking? No, you're actually. She looks like you actually are in hard food. Is, is that? I, you're right. And uh, I was every day. I wonder should I take a jacket or not? It's <laughs> so to New England. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. And there's no football season, and I'm in New England. See, that's not good. Uh, yeah. So we are part of Upward Lab. Um, it's an accelerator. Uh, prop tech and age tech specific, industry specific. And we are lucky enough and we, we have, we really appreciate Shauna, um, our program director, Greg, right. uh, yeah. program coordinator, Janet. It's, it's amazing. Uh, I have, this is my third startup that I'm part of. I have been to Accelerator, I've seen that, but this, and I, I tell this Jeff uh, uh, all the time, uh, sorry, Greg, uh, all the time that most of the accelerator is like you have classes. You're going there and you are, uh, okay, today is about marketing. Today is about sales. This one is really great because we have partners like you and there are so many of them and everybody's willing to help. The relationship that Upward Labs have with all the partners 
is amazing. And we are getting an opportunity to test live uh, product uh, with Hartford Healthcare. That's gonna be amazing feedback and input for us and priority life care. More to that, I was so amazed, even in our second week, we met with 11 companies in three days. And they're not, not like other startups, they're big giants in America, like Nasre or, or Aetna, CVS Health, and all of them, AARP. AARP is now helping us define our journey map, get us interviews with the facilities to understand them better. I'm talking to you on this podcast, which will be uh, delivered to so many other investors and our stakeholders. So it's, it's, it's amazing. And I'm looking forward to the next six months. I'll be in Hartford and we will be running our pilot, collecting the metrics data, and we'll be graduating in February. So our goal is uh, to launch our product in 2021 uh, based on the data and feedback from Hartford and PLC. And we will also start raising money uh, around January to be commercial. It's awesome. We look forward to um, you know being back in Hartford ourselves in, in short order and meeting in person. But like you said, it's it's a great opportunity that Upward provides even for us to be able to meet companies like yourself doing wonderful things out there. So, you know, kudos to you for for making that six month move to an amazing city. And I'm excited to see where this brings you. Same here. Yeah, Jill, Chiefs, thank you very much, and uh, Laura, thanks for uh, pulling us all together. And uh, listen. Uh, and thanks for listening to the show. Uh, be sure if you, you like this, tell your friends, forward it to people who have a lot of money uh, to invest. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, listen, we'll look forward just to seeing your progress over the next uh, next few months here in Hartford. And uh, you absolutely keep us up to date. All right. Yeah, and, and they can follow us on LinkedIn, Hey Herbie, or Facebook, and our website is uh, HeyHerbie.com. <laughs>